for the first floor, the Indian Brian and Reproductive System. This is the first lecture of the pituitary gland. Okay. So let's learn about the pituitary gland. So one of the endocrine gland. So we're having a very very important function in this uh, endocrine system as it controls the secretion of majority of the hormones. other glands in the body. So that's why this pituitary is called as the master gland. Okay. So let's learn about this pituitary gland, like where it is situated, its relations, its functions and all. Okay, what are its parts? So the pituitary gland is small, even though it's bean shaped, you know, small beans. Yes. So that bean shaped gland so located the base of the brain, you uh, can observe this is the brain, okay? mm -hmm. this is the base of the brain, this is the tiny gland, the bean shaped gland, this is the pituitary gland. So where it is situated, it is situated in the base of the brain, hanging down from the base of the brain, with the, like a, a stalk, you know, that is called as the pituitary stalk or the infundibulum, and situated in the middle cranial fossa, where okay? middle cranial, just recollect the knowledge from your the first year. Just recollect them from the skull, you know, the cranial cavity. Yes. They have an anterior, middle, and posterior cranial fossa, right? The middle cranial fossa, the center, what is that? What bone is that? Middle cranial fossa, center, there is a bone. What is that bone? Cella fossa. Yeah, I know, cella classica. It is there in which bone? What are the bones which make the base of the skull? So one of the is having two wings, lesser wing and greater wing. Where is that bone? Yeah. Spinoid, yes. So it is the spinoid bone. In the body of the spinoid bone, there is a, a what is that board shaped cavity. So that is called as hypophysial fossa. Hypophysial fossa, cella tersica, in which you have the situation of the pituitary gland. So that fossa is covered by fold of dura which covers the gland. So that is called as diaphragm cella. What is the diaphragm cella? It is the fold of dura matter covering the pituitary gland. This is the fossa. Okay. Yeah. Hypophysial fossa the cella tersica. Okay. In which you have the covering by that fold of diaphragm. That is called as diaphragm cella. So it is like a tent. Okay. Between this, you have the pituitary gland. Okay, that is the situation of the pituitary gland. So, before getting into the anatomy, so you should know the function. You already know it. Okay, you already studied in our pre Okay, so it is a, as I said, it's called as the master gland because it releases many hormones which control the function of other endocrine gland. Right. So that's why it is called as the master gland. So there are many number of hormones which are secreted by the pituitary, which is the anterior and posterior pituitary, which regulates many of the body functions like sexuality, reproduction, growth, maturation, metabolism, all those functions of the body are regulated by the hormones, okay? So which are majority of which are secreted by your pituitary gland, which in turn will control the secretions of the other endocrine glands, okay? in the form of what is the releasing hormones okay which releases the hormones from the other endocrine gland is clear yes, yes. so let's uh, get into the anatomy so in the vertebrate anatomy the pituitary gland are also known as the hypophysis what is the other name for pituitary hypophysis okay so in a small gland weighs about 0.5 grams just 0.5 gram that is the weight of the gland it's so small it is it's a tiny the gland okay the size of a pea as I said, it is situated in the hypophysial fossa. So, where is this hypophysial fossa? Within the body of the spinoid bone in the middle cranial fossa. Okay. Middle cranial fossa. Okay. Covered by a neural fold called as the diaphragm cella. Okay. The same thing it is explained. The pituitary fossa in which the pituitary gland sits is situated in the spinoid bone in the middle cranial fossa at the base of the brain. The pituitary gland secretes hormones. Whatever. Same thing is written. Okay. 
So functionally it is connected to the hypothalamus. From the hypothalamus there is a stalk, you know, yeah. yes, yes. stalk which is called as infundibulum, which connects the pituitary with the hypothalamus. I will come to that later, okay? So it is considered to be the master gland. Yes, this is the picture of the skull, cranial cavity, okay? Showing you the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa, the posterior cranial fossa, okay? The center, this is what is the sphenoid bone. Here is what is the pituitary stalk, okay? So this blue all, all blue is the dura, uh -huh. the dura matter, okay? Now you can't see the pituitary gland, why? Because it is covered by dura matter, it is like this, this is the fossa, this is the diaphragm cella, that is the dura matter, through which you have the passage of the pituitary stalk, which is connecting to the hypothalamus. Am I clear? So diaphragm cella is pierced by the pituitary stalk. Below the diaphragm cella is the pituitary gland. Am I clear? Yes. Okay, this is the middle cranial fossa, the cella testicular covered by diaphragm cella, through which you have the passage of pituitary stalk, connecting the gland with the hypothalamus. Clear? Yes. So just Remember these pictures which are very important from your examination point of view, that is your uh, OSPI, okay? There are five pictures. There are five pictures. Okay. So, as I said, the gland is connected to the region of the brain called the hypothalamus by the pituitary stalk. Same thing this gland, okay? Directly above the pituitary gland and in front of the pituitary gland. Now coming to the relations, okay? The pituitary gland is here, okay? I'll just go back to the same previous. Can you see this here? So this is the pituitary gland. Okay. Yes. So directly above, above the pituitary gland and in front, these two. Can you see this? What are they? They are the. No. This is stalk. This, this. What are those two nerves? Uh, it's coming from the orbit. Optic nerves. Optic nerves. Okay. Optic nerves. So two optic nerves, and then joining, forming what? Crossing. What is the structure called as? It's two optic nerve, yeah? Right. Optic chiasma. Yes. First of all, the optic chiasma, the two optic nerves, the join. Yes. And then from optic chiasma, from where the temporal fibers, the nasal fibers, they cross, okay? Mm -hmm. So then optic nerves forming optic chiasma and then the optic tract, okay? Yes. So that forms the upper and front relations of the pituitary gland, okay? So now, on either side, what do you find on the pituitary gland? We have what do you find here? Which dural venous sinus is there? Dural venous sinuses. You have the cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus. It says within the dura matter is having two folds, right? One endoscular layer and one meningeal layer. Between them you have the dural venous sinuses. I think you, you will learn them in the third year, okay? So on either side of the pituitary gland you find the cavernous a sinus through which you have the passage of a very important big vessel which supplies the whole brain. There is an internal carotid artery. Can you see it here? Okay. So this is the pituitary gland. It is the hypophysial fossa. Okay. So now these are the two optic nerves, upper relation. Okay. Upper and in front also. On either side, these are the two sinuses, venous sinuses filled with blood. Venous blood, okay? okay? Within the sinus, you have these nerves and then the artery. Okay. Which is the important artery? The okay. internal carotid artery. Okay. That? Okay. The internal okay. carotid artery. Internal carotid artery, which supplies the brain. Yes. Okay? So along with that internal carotid artery, within this cavernous sinus, you have these nerves, which are very important for the eye, eye movements and the vision. Okay? Yes. That is ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, oculomotor nerve, cochlear nerve, adaptocent nerve, so many cranial nerves yeah. are there within the cavernous sinus. They all will form the relations of the pituitary gland. Which relations? Side relations on either side of the gland. Okay. So what is below the gland? Within the sphenoid bone you have a air sinus, paranasal air sinus. That is the sphenoidal air sinus. What is that? Sphenoidal air sinus. The bone, the bone is not totally hard bone. Inside the bone there is a cavity containing air. When I am speaking, the, my voice is resonant. Why it is? Because, because of these air sinuses like maxillary sinus, frontal air sinus, 
okay spinoid layer sinuses ethmoid layer sinuses the bone is the skull is light it's not heavy too much heavy okay because inside the bone there are cavities which are filled with air around the nasal cavity that's why they are called as para nasal air sinuses okay which will may measure the main function of these air sinuses is to give resonance to the that's why whenever you suffer from cold okay okay your voice changes why it changes in cold the secretions are more so that secretions will fill up these sinuses so the resonance in the voice is lost that's why the voice changes okay so that is the one one of the air sinus that is the sphenoidal air sinus which forms the inferior relations these are the lateral relations upper relation front relation and then inferior relation these are all the relations of the pituitary gland why this studying the relations is important surgically it is very important because something happens to the pituitary gland there may be some tumor of the pituitary gland okay so what will happen it may press upon the sinus it may press upon these nerves this vessels giving rise to different symptoms and signs am i clear that is why these knowing the relations becomes important clinically if there is any tumor it may press upon these nerves optic optic nerves may be causing blindness okay so that's why these relations become important clinically okay so you should know the relations of the pituitary gland am i clear clear about the relations the side or the lateral relations inferior relations superior and inferior and inferior relations yeah this is what okay yeah relation the same it's now explained no you want me to explain again there is some okay the anterior and superior relations of the pituitary gland is the optic nerve with the optic chiasma the lateral relations on both sides we have the cavernous sinus containing internal cavity artery and the cranial nerves which cranial nerve third fourth fifth and two branches of the fifth that is the ophthalmic kind maxillary okay what are they oculomotor trochlear ophthalmic maxillary abducens and internal cavity dart clear what are the inferior relations spinoidal air sinus am i clear these are the relations of the pituitary gland pituitary gland so this picture also very important which explains all the relations okay so next coming to the parts of the pituitary gland which you are going to learn again in your histology okay so the pituitary gland even though it is a tiny depending upon the hormones which are secreted and the the micro anatomy the micro anatomy of the pituitary it is divided into three parts okay or you can say just two parts okay so that is anterior pituitary posterior pituitary and the intermediate okay so some of the authors they include intermediate in the anterior So you have only anterior and posterior pituitary. Am I clear? Yes. So the anterior pituitary is called as adenohypophysis, yes. according to the according to the microanatomy. That means you have more and more of cells secreting cells. That's why it is called adeno yes. adenohypophysis. Yes. The posterior is called as neurohypophysis yes. because it contains n number of the neuron cells. That is the no axons mainly. Okay. That's why it is called as neurohypophysis. Yes. Okay. Anterior. posterior and intermediate okay this is again one more picture showing you the three parts okay anterior pituitary posterior pituitary and then intermediate so anterior again having different parts yes so let's explain it so before going into the details so you should know one point about the embryology yes. so many of the glands in the body they are developed from endoderm but this is the gland It develops from ectoderm. Ectoderm. From outside it develops. That is oral ectoderm, and then then it imaginates. Yeah, yeah. So that's why sometimes there may be a connection between the base of the brain and then the oral cavity. Oh, that okay. is remnant of the case pouch. That pouch we call it as the case pouch. Yeah. What is the pouch? So pituitary gland develops from the case pouch. This is an imagination of the oral ectoderm. Remember this. Okay. So now, as I said, three parts: anterior, pars anterior, pars posterior, and pars intermediate. Pars is any part, okay? So the anterior pituitary is having three parts, okay? So one is called as pars distalis, 
pass through parallelis and pass intermediate. As explained, explaining the intermediate, some others they include it in anterior pituitary. Okay. So what is pass distal? This is the main part of the anterior pituitary. That means the lower part, distal part of the gland, is called as pars distalis, which contains many cells in the pituitaries, which secretes the hormones from the anterior pituitary. Okay, that is pars distalis and pars tuberalis. What is the pars tuberalis? It is the part of the anterior pituitary which covers the pituitary star, which covers the pituitary star. Can you see this? So this part, which covers the, this is the pituitary star. This is called as pars tuberalis, which covers this tube, connecting the pituitary gland with the hypothalamus. Clear? Pars tuberalis, pars distalis, and this pars intermediate is also included in anterior pituitary. So, very important part of the anterior pituitary is pars distalis, which secretes out the hormones. Okay? So, these are the hormones which are secreted by your pars distalis, or you can say altogether. The adenohypophysis of the past anterior. Am I clear? Yes. So, which you learn again in your physiology and histology classes. Should we say the day before or the day before the study? Yeah. So, we learn it in histology and physiology. Okay. okay. Anatomical macroanatomy is not. Okay. We are interested in the structure, not in the hormone secreted by it. So, now the posterior pituitary, also known as the neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis. Actually, uh, this posterior pituitary or the neurohypophysis is not actually a, a gland per se. That means it is not secreting the, yes, the hormones. hormones. Okay? Actually, posterior pituitary is nothing but collection of axons. It is mainly the collection of axons with some uh, binding cells called the pituitaries, which will be between the axons. The axons of the cells which are situated in the hypothalamus. So the cell body is there in the hypothalamus. So their axons will run to the pituitary, through the pituitary star. And here the secretions are released, that's it. But they are produced in the hypothalamus. Yes. And they are released through their axons in the posterior pituitary. So as such, the posterior pituitary is not a gland per se, but the secretions are mainly from the hypothalamus. Just they are released in the posterior pituitary, like oxytocin and pituitary. Okay? Got it? Yes. yes. So that is what is mentioned again. Okay. So the same. Again, three parts. You can say the pars nervosa that mainly consists of the axons, the cell bodies of which are situated in the hypothalamus, and then infundibular star. That star, pituitary star, itself is included in the posterior pituitary, pituitary star. The covering the pituitary star is anterior, pars tuberalis. The pituitary star itself. Which is what does it contain? It contains the axons coming from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary. That is infundibular star and the median eminence, the small part. Okay? Yeah? What's the function of the hearing body and the other one? What? The function of the, the you think that's really So you will learn those things in the histology. That is cellular part. That is microanatomy, not macroanatomy. Okay? So just you remember the posterior pituitary is nothing but the correction of collection of the axons, the cell bodies of which are situated in the hypothalamus. The secretions from the hypothalamic, they come to the neurohypothalamus. Yes. Same, one of the same. same. Different line, like pituitary gland itself is called as hypophysis or pituitary gland or hypophysis cerebri, like that. Different. No, it is a stalk. Pituitary is down here. Okay? It is a stalk which connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. That is the stalk. You know that a flower, how it is attached to the branch? It is by a, a stalk. Flower. Okay? That, that's just like that. It is a stalk. Okay? Like a pedicle of a leaf or a so flower. So, this is the side of the pituitaries. Upper part. This is what is the median eminence. Okay? Part of your hypothalamus. That you will learn the details of the microanatomy. The actually, the topic is much in histology compared to the grass anatomy part. Okay? So, in grass anatomy, you should know about the situation and its relations and blood supply. Okay? So, this part I have brought it. Let's say, let's say. You will learn much about these details of the what are the cells present, 
what are the different parts and all in the histology ok so these are the two hormones related by your posterior ok coming to the blood supply so here the blood supply is very important just like the other part GAP where you have the portal system here also you have the portal system that means the veins are having connections ok so that is because some of the hormones of the pituitary are also regulated by hypothalamus ok how the hypothalamus regulates the functioning of 